Hi, this is Paul Shepard, and welcome to the Mindset Changing Podcast. In this episode, we'll be discussing, is your average life making you anxious? This could blow your mind. (laughs) We better dive right in. I'm laughing because this episode came out of nowhere, literally nowhere. I've been studying a lot of new stuff recently and I saw TikTok the other day and suddenly my brain lit up like a Christmas tree and said, we've got to talk about this. And Before you know it, I've written this episode and here it is. Before I go into that, I have refreshed my YouTube channel, as I said I would, And the Mindset Coach UK is up where you will be able to see in the future exclusive content videos of me talking about mindset stuff. You can subscribe and you can comment and it's a great way of engaging and contacting me too. If you're a Spotify listener, I've just seen that you can now rate me on Spotify too. Be kind, but I really would love your support. If you've not left a review on Apple yet or a rating or a comment on what you want me to cover, please do so. It helps people to find me and I would love to know what you think and what you want me to talk about. So let's get on with the show. Is your average life, is your average life making you anxious? That's a strange title, isn't it? And it's not something I've really talked about within my podcasts before. But you know what? It is about time, especially if we are going to get your mindset to help you create your best year yet. So I saw a TikTok recently of a young girl crying and she was asking, why is life so hard? Now, I'm sure some of you listening to this will be able to relate. I certainly can, because it has felt like, at times, life has truly sucked. Now, this episode isn't a reflection on this young lady. I really don't know her circumstances, but I do have a controversial perspective, which some of you may agree with, and some of you definitely won't. I think this episode is really going to piss off some people. I'm really sorry, but I am not sorry. But that's okay. Look, life would be boring if we all saw the world the same way, wouldn't it? By the way, some of this episode has been inspired by the controversial entrepreneur, Grant Cordone. He is the author of The Ten Times Rule. I heartily recommend this book, especially if you want to make this year your most successful year yet. But it's not for the faint hearted. If you read it, you will realize that you can't play it safe creating your success. That's just the way it is. Just to add, of course, there are many nuances and aspects as to why someone will be finding life hard. Physical, mental issues, resisting and fighting with life, circumstances which involve your family or friends. But we have to be honest. Where are we making excuses and what's reality? Our inner child is the master of excuses under the misguided belief it's keeping us safe. We have to work out the difference between reasons and excuses. And you have to be honest. But here's something I want you to think about, which is the subject of today's episode. And I believe it makes our lives much harder than it needs to be. And I fell for this hook, line and sinker. And I've seen many a client fall for this trap too. Now, most of you listening to this, and I included, had been brainwashed and conditioned by parents, influential adults, our culture, into aiming for an existence to be average. To be average middle class at most. Instead of being helped to know ourselves enough to realise what types of lives we truly want to live with authenticity, 
we are pushed towards being average. As after all, being anything more than that can risk failure, isn't realistic or looks egotistical. Now, my own success has been mired by programming from my past. My therapist once said to me that I was taught from a young age not to stand out or shine. Despite having that burning desire to do exactly that, I was given a very strong message. Paul, just put your head down and get on with it. Find a stable trade and go from there. I wasn't given any career advice, instructions, how to plan for my future. My parents just didn't do that. Now, this isn't parent blaming, by the way. It's just understanding where it has come from to live the way we do, to live averagely and not take risks. I believe that anyone who is experiencing anxiety should reassess their life goals as their average life plan could be one of the reasons as to why they feel anxious. As a holistic anxiety coach, we have to look at the bigger picture. And often, someone's life plan just simply isn't good enough for them. And its effects can be felt deep to the core. Oh, just a note. I do finally have some spaces coming up for anyone who wants mindset or anxiety coaching. We're talking towards the end of January, but there are spaces finally beginning to emerge if you would like to have a chat. So let's think about that average life where people are creating the average goals, putting in the average effort, the average time to create the average success. Think about the average career, where someone puts in the average nine to five hours, Monday to Friday, again with the average effort, success, and for the average financial reward. This isn't average bashing, by the way. Uh, If that's what you really want, then either ignore this episode or be open to the ideas that I'm floating within it. The average wage, job and lifestyle, looking at it, creates a lot of hardship, anxiety and worry. I believe it's the equivalent of treading water, where you don't know what's lurking in the depths below you. That's a level of tension no one needs to experience. The moment there is a change in your circumstances, that sea gets rather choppy and anger Stress, anxiety and depression can really begin to kick right in. Why? Because the future looks now at risk. Is this really how you want to live your life? I mean, look at how the coronavirus has made people ill mentally and physically by destabilising their average lives. Incomes at risk, businesses failing and lifestyle plans put completely on hold because of living that average existence. They didn't have anything to fall back on. Now remember, this isn't a blame game. I'm not here to shame anyone. I'm just pointing out that because of the conditioning that we have as a population into aiming for average, as soon as there is a change in circumstances which puts any of that at risk, we can really suffer. Living the average work life is just not enough for security, purpose, contentment or fulfilment. I mean, which values are triggered, worked upon, connected with by living the average work life? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't think of any. Someone might say stability. Well, as soon as there's a change in circumstances, that doesn't look so stable, does it? The average work existence isn't great for mental health. It leads to people feeling anxious and depressed to the point where they rush home and distract the hell out of themselves mindlessly 
or they self-medicate with food, drinks, porn, gaming, gambling, drugs, before they have to go and do it all over again. And that's if they've got a good night's sleep. Good luck with that. Too many people want to switch themselves off into a state of trance like the walking dead as they don't want to face the reality of their misery. I've been there, I know I didn't, and it didn't work out very well for me at all. I remember when I was commuting to work on the train, it was a Monday, and this changed my life because I was sat there and I was already wishing it was the weekend. I was wishing my precious average life away because at the time I wasn't dreaming big enough. I was just simply trying to cram living life into two days, which went incredibly quickly. And before I know it, it was fucking Monday again. Yeah. When I did dare to dream bigger, I have over the years got myself to where I am now. And I am really, really grateful for that. But I've got a long way to go because I still need to create a bigger vision for this year, for the next few years. And in my Mindset Boost 22 episode, I talked about what my new vision is. It's changing weekly. I can't keep up. Um, There are new developments happening all the time, which is making this a very exciting and scary ride. I'm not pretending I'm anywhere yet. It's going to be a continual journey of changing missions because it has commitment, purpose, fulfillment and contentment. It taps into my values and the obstacles from life, which makes it feel hard, actually makes it feel more worth it. You have to get very creative with these obstacles, the things that life brings your way. But the mission I have is more important than how hard I find those obstacles at times. I know that if I was faced with life's obstacles in an average job and existence with no purpose, then the struggle would be much harder and I'll be questioning what the fuck am I doing all this for? I think you might have asked yourself that question on a regular basis. And if you are, then it's time for a change. You didn't find this podcast, this episode, for no reason. Every moment of your life has led to this very second and you're hearing this message and it's your choice whether you decide to do something with it or not. But we have to have bigger focused visions of what we truly want and stop aiming for the average. We don't mind life being harder if those obstacles feel absolutely worth it. If the mission you have for your life is more important than any obstacle, you will find a way to overcome it. And let's be honest, you've done this before. And I'm going to mention parents. I'm in awe of the changes, the adaptability, the resilience, everything you did to help manage your newborn child. Do not let your own mindset suddenly say that you couldn't overcome new obstacles because you've overcome how many? Might have been tiring, but I bet it was worth it. You have, deep within you, the most incredible potential that you could choose to do anything with if you wanted to. But... Your programming is holding you back. That comfort zone you hold on to is nothing of the sort. It's an illusionary prison, stunting your own growth, destabilizing your future and making you feel anxious. When I've talked about my goals before, people are like, oh, as they're clutching their chest, that sounds really unrealistic. (laughs) Thanks. Where's your support? People will tell you to stick to being average. Be realistic like they are. Take small steps. Set small goals. I like Grant Cardone's take on the hare and tortoise tale, which he talks about in a 10 times rule, which promotes the age-old apparent wisdom of winning the race by taking it slow and steady and not burning out like the hare. Uh, 
I mean, I'm a runner and any runner knows that you can increase pace for short periods with some recovery pace before picking back up again. You would smash the race going for it this way and be home way before the tortoise even got near the finishing line. Society is full of analogies to just take it easy and be average. Now, you can't go burning yourself out like a firework. And I don't believe that you can create these changes that greatly from a place of pain. Tapping into your values, tapping into who your future self is, they're a completely different person to you, by the way, but tapping into who they are, how they're living, creates something known as perspection. It's an amazing psychological phenomenon where you begin to adopt your future selves, habits and values and behaviors, anything they're doing in the here and now. And I know from personal experience how awesome that is. It changed my life forever because I've got my shit together by doing exactly that. If you want future self coaching, come chat to me. If you want to explore the podcasts and do it from there, do that. The choice is yours. But let's face facts. If you want 2022 to be a different year, you cannot live averagely. That's not going to work. It's what you've been doing before and you're likely to repeat the same year. I see those t-shirts sometimes on people in Brighton with same, same shit, different day. Ah, oh, that makes me feel nauseous because who wants to live a life like that? But regardless of how the Rona situation goes on this year, you have to wake up out of that average chance and create a vision for your future self who is living that authentic life you truly want to live. Don't live the average life that's been pushed onto you. Maybe that's why some of you are feeling resentful and angry about your lives. You're not living the life you wanted. You're just living the life that you feel you should be living. Just to add another dynamic to this. But there's a lot of rich people who make a lot of money from you, staying in your average lane, your average trance, marketing at you how to make you feel more special if you just buy their latest product, gadget, drink. Visit that latest holiday destination or watch the latest must-see TV show. How more exciting your life would be if you just lived averagely. Huh? So take your left hand, put it into a fist, and put the fist facing facing you. Then lift up your middle finger and give the middle finger to an average life. Let's start getting creative and dare to think about how you truly want to live. The wonderful thing about this is that you get to redesign your future. You're the creator, no one else. And we can tap into what is known as that perspective. Yeah, where your future vision of you actually triggers his behaviors now. Yeah, you get to start living your future life now. And that will help keep your future timeline intact. Kind of owe it to your future self because you can't just pass all your problems to them which a lot of us have done, where we go, do you know what, I'm just going to eat all this rubbish now and my future self, who's overweight and unhealthy, can deal with the problem. It's going to catch up with us. But changing my future self was incredibly powerful for me. It really did make a big difference to my work life and my personal life, and it's not stopped since. Now, I love the psychology around this. And when you begin tapping into your future self and perspective begins to work, what also happens is you're tapping into your own confirmation bias. The more you begin to believe and reassert your life towards your future self, your confirmation bias will reinforce your new beliefs about yourself by changing your reality filters to match. And you will find yourself magnetically drawn to information, people and situations in synchronicity to help manifest your vision into reality. You do have to act on it though. There's no point noticing opportunities, hearing the most amazing information if you don't act and take advantage of them. 
you were drawn to this podcast for a reason. There's part of you trying to make this happen, but will you listen? Now, just to add, I'm a big fan of Dr. Benjamin Hardy. If you've not seen his brilliant YouTube channel, he talks a lot about future self programming. Big fan. So go and watch. But what he does point out is that dreaming big can be very scary. And people will try to put you off by saying your goal is unrealistic. But remember this, reaching the goal isn't important. Right, okay. Here's why. For example, my goal is to reach 10 million streams in five years of this podcast. I want to make this podcast my main career. I have a mission to help as many people as I possibly can change their mindsets. And doing it on a one-to-one basis with coaching, absolutely love coaching, is good, but a podcast show can reach many more people. And it has done that. Thousands and thousands of you listen each week, which I'm truly, truly grateful for. Now, 10 million streams in five years. What? Okay, so I did 10 times my goal. So if in five years after going all out, I only managed half of that, I would be ecstatic because I have reached 5 million streams. That is definitely something not to be sniffed at. But that's very different, isn't it? To setting myself an average goal, say 500,000 or a million streams, which sound good, but that's quite average and probably wouldn't stimulate the level of creativity which is buzzing through my brain right now by setting a larger goal. A bitter pill to swallow, but it's a truth bomb, is that your present life is a reflection of the level of commitment you have given to it. Any area which is failing has been given low commitment priorities. So let's be aware of any excuses, any yes but no but excuses, because excuses don't help you, do they? Creating your future self is an incredible investment, but it does take some getting used to. Now, I'm going to help you with that in my 2022 Mindset series. So please keep listening. But the seed has been planted For those that are ready, I'm really looking forward to hearing what you are creating and what you begin to notice happening as your reality shifts. So back to the question, is your average life making you anxious? Well, only you can answer that. But I believe, working holistically, that it could be part of the problem. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Thank you so much for sharing subscribing, leaving reviews, I am truly, truly grateful. The most important thing I'd like you to focus on today is to have an amazing day. Not an average day. You did not wake up to be average. Have an amazing day. And I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode.